Thank you all so much for joining us today. My name is Brother Hawk Bolden, and as usual, we're grateful to the Lord to come before you and share with you the things that uh, God has to say today. All right, so if you have your Bibles, let's go to the ninth chapter of the book of Mark. The ninth chapter of the book of Mark. Amen. We want to say thank you to everyone who have responded to uh, uh, my request to let us know if you are, if you consider yourself a member of this ministry, and uh, and that we we do that. We did that at the unction of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I, I've had some people in the past to approach me wanting uh, some counsel or wanting to be talked to who were members at and who already had a shepherd and the lord dealt with me about that about not doing that that if you have a shepherd uh then that's who you really need to be counseling with and um so i wanted to know who considered themselves a member of this ministry uh part of it was so that i could know who who god have placed under me and uh, who i could counsel whenever they call for counsel because i don't want to overstep my boundaries and uh, be ministering to somebody else's sheep. And uh, because I feel like wherever you're getting fed at, uh, whoever your shepherd is, that, that that's who you need to be uh, counseling with if you, if you um, need counseling. All right, so I wanna say thank you all for, for responding to that. And those of you that haven't responded, if you still, again, if you consider yourself a member of this ministry, uh, give us, uh, let us know. You can send us an email, uh, gtdministries at gmail dot com. So thank you all again for, thank you all again for uh, getting in touch with us and letting us know that. And for those of you who also sent pictures, we thank you for that as well. And we will uh, definitely uh, organize that because we want to keep, uh, uh, make sure that we keep uh, all of that, keep records of that. You know, so we'll know. And be able to check on people that uh, who who uh, follow this ministry and who are part of this ministry, uh, regardless of where they are uh, locally or uh, internationally or whatever. All right, so the ninth chapter of the book of Mark, and we're going to start reading at verse thirty-three. It says, "And he came to Capernaum." And being in the house, he asked them, what was, it, what was it that ye disputed among yourselves by the way? In other words, while they were on their way there. And in verse 34, but they held their peace. For by the way, they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. And I think that's very interesting. It's just like, you know, asking a child a question. And then they know that they are wrong in whatever question it was that you're asking. And so they just choose to be quiet if you allow them to and so here they understood that they were wrong in what they were disputing and so when jesus asked them uh what it was they were disputing the bible says they held their peace and it says why they held their peace because they disputed among themselves who should be the greatest so they knew that the lord wasn't operating that way they knew that the lord wasn't concerned about who should be the greatest and all of that and so in that in the same manner they knew better than to answer that question. You see that? So verse 35 says, And he sat down and called the twelve and saith unto them, If any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all and servant of all. So he's letting them know the order of the kingdom of God, that if you desire to be great in the kingdom of God, you'll make yourself a last and you'll also make yourself a servant of all. You see, so you see how different that is the kingdom of God is from the kingdom of this world. How, uh, if not, the idea isn't not so, so, so someone that will make themselves last and also make themselves a servant, they're not doing it for the purpose of thinking, well, I'm going to, this is going to put me in first place or this is going to make me the greatest. 
they, they just have a servant's heart. And so this also brings about the idea of motives, you see. And so you don't make yourself a servant for the purpose of being great. You see that? You become great because you've made yourself a servant. You see that? And so this tells us the mindset and it shows us the mindset and what God thinks. Of course, he sees motive as well. So even with him telling them this, they, they might not grab a hold of it. You see that? And so if you're, if you're, if your objective is to become first and then you move from there to, to what it takes to become first. In other words, I want to be great. And so in order for me to be great, I guess I have to make myself last and servant of all. See, your mindset is still wrong. You see, your mindset is still wrong because your mindset is still to become great. And that's not God's will. God's will is for you to become a servant and for you to make yourself last. And when you do that, God himself exalts you in due time, you see? So the idea isn't to work or to do things to become exalted because your mindset is still to become exalted. It's still wrong. The mindset should be, okay, God, I'm working for you and I'm going to do what you call me to do regardless of where you put me in, what, what, regardless of what place you set me in. And see, that is what God desires. What, whatever you're doing in the kingdom of God, you should ask yourself, why am I doing this? Am I doing this to be seen? Am I doing this to, to receive accolades? You see that whatever you're doing in the kingdom of God, you should ask yourself, what is your motive behind it? You see, so in the ninth chapter of the book of Mark, you see, verse 35, it says, and he sat down and called the 12 and said unto them, if any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all and servant of all. So you see that he, he's giving you what it takes to be first or what it takes to be great, you see. So in other words, your mindset have to be on serving and being last, not for the sake of being great, see. So you still have a problem there. And what will happen is if you set out with the mindset of I'm going to do whatever it takes to be great, then eventually you will get worn out because your mindset is still wrong. See, it won't happen fast enough for you because God will know your motives to begin with. If you are serving the Lord to be great, then there's no room for you. You see that to be great. That you automatically disqualify yourself. John the Baptist, according to Jesus Christ, there was no man born greater of woman than John the Baptist. But look at what happened when Jesus Christ showed up on the scene. He said, I must decrease and he must increase. You see, and of course, as we went over before, that's exactly the way it has to be. If the Lord is going to show up and do anything in our lives, uh, we have to decrease ourselves. We have to move self out the way, you see. And so verse 36 says, and he took a child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto him, unto them, whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive me, receiveth not me, but him that sent me. Now, I think that's very interesting. Notice he didn't take that child and say, if you act like him, if you be like him. Now, we know he said that in a few other instances. But look at what this instance, in this instance, he says, whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name. Now, what is this talking about? You know, I've noticed that high-minded people really love being around other high-minded people. They they take to things of high estate. And so they, and of course, a lot of so-called believers have adopted this philosophy that if you want to be great, you got to hang around people that are great and all this other foolishness. And so Jesus takes a child. He sets that child in the midst of them. And he took that child in his arms and he told them, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name. So here's the question. You know what your motives are. You know where you are a lot of times in your actions uh, by the people who you are able to receive. We've had people come to this ministry. And of course, we don't have a big sanctuary. It's not anything fancy. You know, uh, and we're not trying to be fancy, you know, when it all when it's all said and done, uh, we'll have to leave all of this behind to begin with. 
And not that we're against anything being, you know, big or anything like that. It's just this is where God has us and we are satisfied with where God have us. And so, you know, we've had people come to this ministry who, you know, they had left other ministries and, and they were well known in those ministries. They were close to the pastor and they were used to eating dinner with the pastor and doing all of these other different things. And then when they get here, uh, they find out that I those are games that I don't play. Uh, I'll eat dinner with anyone who's not living in sin, you know, as far as what we read about in the first chapter, in, in the fifth chapter of 1 Corinthians, you know, that it gives that list of people not to eat with. And that I'm not concerned with your status, with what you make, with how much you put in the offering plate, because we don't even take, take any of that into account. I don't know what people are putting in the offering plate. You see, so I'm not concerned with what you drive, uh, who you are, what you've done before you got here or anything like that. If you're a child of God, as far as I'm concerned, then, you know, we're all on the same level in God's eyes as far as, you know, being his children. So I'm not concerned with what status you've obtained in this world. I'm not concerned with how good of a job you have, what kind of house you live in and what kind of car you drive. I don't care about any of that. You see that if I don't, I don't, because I, it, I don't really care about it in my own life. So sure enough, I don't care about it in yours. I, I look at everybody the same, you know, in, in that instant, I, I'm more concerned with your spiritual growth and where you are with God, you know, and have no concern whatsoever with, with what kind of job you work and how much money you're pulling in. And so people come here and they come here with that high mind and they start trying to get close to me. Uh, I guess, I don't know. I guess you can call them trying to become the pastor's pet or whatever. And that's just not something that I'm into. You see, I just, I spend, I try to spend time with everybody as much as I can and, and talk to anybody who will, uh, who, who want to talk. And so when they come here, it's hard for them to receive me when they see that I'm not that way, that I don't play that game, I don't play politics, I don't, you see, I, I'm just not concerned with the worldly stuff. And so they, they come here and they, they try to maneuver and do all these things and it doesn't work because that's just not how this ministry is set up. I don't have a right-hand man or left-hand man for that matter. We have people who are, you know, deacons or elder or whatever, but, you know, I, to me, it's just whatever you do in the ministry, that's what you do. You, whatever your calling is, that's what you do. I don't, I don't look at one position being better than the other, or whatever the case is. It's all a gift of God, and and so you know, if God have called you to do something, then that's what you're called to do. And, and so it's hard for them to really blend in the ministry because uh, of their high mindedness. They it's like people when they're high minded. They got to attach themselves to people who 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 are high-minded themselves uh, to be validated, and you know, and of course, you see that all in the Christian world, where you know, even believers will accept uh, sinners as celebrities. So you know, they don't have any problems with inviting these sinners to their church to sing because they got some big name in the secular world, and that's just not a game that we play. And so I don't, I don't. I don't, you know, believe that Christians ought to feel, uh, get their validation from the world and get their validation through worldly means, in other words. And so when people are that way, it's hard for them to receive a child. In other words, somebody with humility or a ministry that's, you know, has humility in it that's not, you know, into all these politics and games that other ministries, uh, some ministries can play because they, they come in wanting to get established and they're, they're, they come in wanting to be something great. And that's just not how, you know, we do it. That's not, God didn't call us to do it that way. So that's not how we do it. And, and so, you know, Jesus, he takes a child and he says, whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name receiveth me. And whosoever shall, re uh, shall receive me receiveth not me, but him that sent me. And so there you see the humility there. You can tell where a person is as far as humility based on who they're around, who they receive. I, I'm telling you, I, 
I've known people that it just seemed like they they were very good at bragging about what other people had. Even if they didn't have it, they wanted to brag about what other people had. And they were it's like you couldn't bring up anything without them trying to one up you with what somebody else have or what they have because it's like they just I don't know. I, I guess they just need to know who they are in the Lord. I imagine or know what God thinks about them. Because it's like people, they, they even, you even have to be careful with that and the things that you buy. Some people will pay twice as much for a name brand that's not any better than something else. That's a no name brand. Just for the purpose of having a name. You see that? And we have to be careful. That's, that's idolatry at its, at its, at its core. You see that is just trying to identify with something behind a name of people paying $100 for shades, $200 for shades, and $300 for shoes. And I, to me, I think it's foolishness. I just, I just flat out, I just think it's foolishness. Not saying, I'm not saying anything's wrong with having name brand things, but I'm talking about the mindset sometimes that people have. You know, they feel like if I have a name, then it's validation. And so people sport these name brand clothes and sport these shades and sport all of these different things for the purpose of self-validation, for the purpose of appearing to be great before people. But here, the law says if you receive a child, and I'm going to tell you why, because it's hard for people to receive a child when they themselves are not childlike. In other words, it's hard for people to receive humble people, people with humility, when they themselves are not humble. And that's why the Lord states it that way. You know, children, for the most part, they don't know anything about name brand. I've seen parents buy their children expensive shoes and then have to turn around a couple of months later and buy them more shoes because they babies and they you have to grow, you know, of course they grow out of them. And I just don't believe in, in all of that. And so children don't come here knowing anything about name brand. They don't come here knowing anything about status. They don't know anything about race. They don't see any difference between anything. They are taught that. And usually they're taught that by parents and by society and their surroundings to begin with. And so children, they don't come here trying to get a reputation. You can put... I remember when I was growing up, we had... Uh, the, there was these shoes called Pro Wings, you know. And uh, some of you may may be old enough to remember those type of shoes. And I, I remember it went from there to Reeboks and uh, British Knights. I don't even think they even make those anymore. And, you know, children don't know the difference between pro wings and british knights or pro wings and nikes they don't know the difference shoes are shoes to them you see that and, and so not saying that you shouldn't get good quality shoes but i'm just saying that sometimes parents want validation some of you parents even are concerned about your children going to college for how it make you look you see that you're not concerned with your child getting a good education as much as you're concerned with your, your child making you look good you see that and so and of course that's not god's will and so whenever people come across somebody that's not concerned with all of that they just get wrote off or they write that those people off because they feel like oh well we're not on the same level or whatever but god is not concerned with you trying to be great as much as he's concerned with you being humble if you humble yourself, God will exalt you. You see that? But he re exalts you. It's not, you're not, in other words, you're not, you have to have the mindset that of just being humble is the way to be and not trying to make yourself humble for the purpose of being exalted. You see that? God exalts people in due time because God knows all the little kinks and twerks that's got to be worked out in us that we may not even realize is there. See, so our concern is not being the greatest. Our concern should be being a servant of all, being humble. And we know that if we're humble, then God exalts us in due time. And he exalts us to the place where he wants to exalt us. And his exaltation is not may not be according to what we may think. You see that. But I'm telling you, to me, it's worth it. To be humble is just best to be humble. You run into a lot uh, less conflicts when you're humble. And not only that, but less conflict with God for that matter. Because if you're not humble, then God is his duty to humble you. And he does that different ways. And that those are ways you don't even want to run into. So it's just best 
to be humble. That's the secret to greatness, humility. God can deal with and work with somebody that's humble. And I'm telling you, when you're humble, you don't mind confessing your sins. When you're humble, you don't, you don't mind admitting your faults and asking for prayer. You see that? In fact, let's, this same chapter, uh, chapter 9 of the book of Mark, let's back up to verse 30 and read something just real quick and we'll show you what we're talking about. Verse 30 says, And they departed thence and passed through Galilee, and he would not that any man should know it. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. Verse 32 but they understood not that saying and were afraid to ask him. So I think it's amazing that they go right from that and then and then his next group of scriptures where they are on their way uh, to Capernaum uh, from Galilee and they're disputing among themselves who should be the greatest. Now you might ask yourself, why were they afraid to ask him? Because people who are who are proud, who are concerned about being great, they don't want to look vulnerable in any way. They don't want to look vulnerable in any way, including asking questions. People, people can hear the message and hear a word from God and don't quite understand something in particular and won't ask exactly what it means because they don't want to look like they missed it some kind of way. They, they'd rather make people think that they actually got it. You see that? And so that's the reason why they were afraid to ask. You see, because they were not humble enough. You see that? The Lord didn't, don't mind answering questions. But the question is, are you humble enough to ask? Are you humble enough to say, you know, I didn't quite understand it. Can you, can you expound on that a little bit more? Or, you know, I'm dealing with this issue. Would you mind praying for me? See, humility, how far humility will get you versus being proud and too proud to ask for help. You see that? You can't even repent without humility being present. You see, and so that's well, that's why humility is the secret to greatness, because it helps us in our walk with the Lord. Amen. So we want to say thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and lift. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer before we before we close. So let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this word. Lord, we thank you for bringing this message to us. And we ask, Lord, that you will help us to walk in humility. Lord, if there's any hint of pride in our lives, Lord, we ask that you will expose it and remove it. Lord, help us to be able to receive your word with a humble heart so that we can grow by your word, Lord, as you teaches us in your word to desire the sincere milk of the word of God that we may grow thereby. God, we lift up everyone that's listening in that you will touch them, Lord, if there, anyone is sick, Lord, I pray that you will heal them. Anyone that is tormented, Lord, I ask that you will remove the torment from their lives. Lord, I pray for everyone that's going through something, that uh, having a struggle in their life that they may not see uh, the end to. Lord, I ask that you will give them faith to be able to endure uh, what it is that they, ha that they have to endure. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. So we want to say thank you all so much for joining us today. I pray that something was said that have uh, blessed you. And we look forward to sharing more of God's word with you. Have a blessed day.